Molten salt reactors are a great technology that we can add to our nuclear toolbox in order to produce energy. As we consider all the reactors that are or have been operational in the world, we see the list dominating by pressurized water reactors and by boiling water reactors. The thing that sets the molten salt reactor apart and makes it worth considering is the fact that it turns the way we extract heat from nuclear fission on its head. So in a light water reactor, we have a solid fuel that is cooled by a liquid. There is a liquid moderator and the system works at relatively low heat, but at high pressure. Now in a traditional molten salt reactor, the fuel and the coolant are both a liquid. The moderator is a solid and the temperature is high, but it operates at low pressure. So it's almost diametrically opposed to what a light water reactor or a pressurized water reactor is. Before we move on to the ins and outs of the molten salt reactor, I would like to apprise you of the 12th annual Future of Energy Conference, which is going to take place in Abilene, Texas on April 14th and 15th of this year. Now, if you are curious about molten salt reactors, about thorium and everything that has to do with those two subjects, this really is the place to be. Now, Abilene Christian University has a facility in which a molten salt test reactor is going to be built. So this makes it especially interesting to visit if you like molten salt reactors. Now, at the conference, you are going to get the latest insights and new developments, and you will be able to tour the entire facility. Now, if you want to attend, please visit the link in the description below and make sure that you sign up. Now, let's get back to the molten salt reactor. So, Terrestrial Energy has a co-generation plant on offer, where two molten salt reactors will be installed and provide roughly 400 megawatt of thermal power. Now, they envision a system in which a large salt buffer can soak up the energy that is being produced by these reactors. Now, the stored energy in this molten salt buffer can be used to create electricity, uh, but you can also use it for district heating or some industrial process. And that's the secret sauce of the molten salt reactor concept. This molten salt reactor, the, the integral molten salt reactor by Terrestrial Energy has a 585 degrees Celsius heat. Now, when we consider this figure, which is available in a white paper that was written by NG Troctobel, a Belgian corporation, uh, we see that the heat output for this IMSR is useful for district heating, paper production, soda ash production, and perhaps even ammonia production. And it's also usable in refineries and chemical clusters. And that's a part of the energy puzzle for which we still have very limited options. This is what we call the hard to abate sectors. Now, Troctobel also shows that there's still some other processes, as you can see, uh, steel, glass, uh, cement making and ceramics, for which we need even higher heat, top up heat, or perhaps a uh, even hotter nuclear reactor that can provide that heat. Now, why the focus on the integral molten salt reactor by Terrestrial Energy? It's because they have a well-engineered and mature design. So they have completed the phase two of the vendor design review by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. Now, this is important because it means that the regulator said that no fundamental barriers to licensing the small modular reactor were identified during the review. Now, having talked to people over at Terrestrial Energy for years and years and years, what they have done terrifically is they have made sure that their design was finished and, and they have done all the engineering that's required to basically prove to anyone that if you want to have a molten salt reactor as a heat source for your industrial process, then they have a pretty well engineered product. So looking at the reactor, and here it finally is, because I've been teasing this for months now. Now you see a relatively simple concept. It's, it's a thin walled reactor vessel. Well, thin walled, it's like two, three, maybe four centimeters thick. Compare that with 
a light water reactor, for instance, where it's 20, 25, maybe even 30 centimeters thick. This is a relatively thin wall reactor vessel. Now, in the bottom, you see the graphite moderator. Above that, you see the heat exchangers and you see some pipes. There are also some shutdown rods in there. I don't know how many exactly and whether it is one or more. And above, you can basically see these spiraling pipes. And that's also where the plenum space is. Now, you can also see some pipes coming out of the reactor vessel. Some of that move heat out of the reactor and some of that return cooled salt back into the reactor's heat exchanger. Now, we can divide the production of these reactor vessels into several parts. Basically, you have the large cylindrical bucket, which has to be formed. And then you have the vessel hat, which is essentially the lid. You also have to manufacture those graphite blocks and you have to manufacture the heat exchangers and all the other components that go into the reactor and are needed to make sure that this reactor can operate safely. Now, the integral molten salt reactor is not going to be delivered to the plant with all the components already in there. For instance, the graphite moderator blocks are very delicate and they have to be installed at the site when the reactor is already in place. That's basically because there's a penalty for using graphite as a moderator because these, these graphite blocks that are inside the reactor are pure graphite blocks. There are no chemicals used to fuse these blocks together. During operation, you will have heat transients. Sometimes the reactor will heat up a little and sometimes the reactor will cool down a little, which is a natural part of operation because it has a negative void coefficient. So the hotter the reactor becomes, the more space you will get between the graphite, which means that less neutrons will be moderated. And this basically means that the reactivity of the reactor will go down. So it cools down, which means that it contracts again and that increases the reactivity again. So these graphite blocks have to expand and contract all the time. And these graphite blocks will then slowly lose their structural integrity. And that's why most molten salt reactor cores that have a graphite moderator in them only have a limited lifespan. I hate to interrupt you pasties. Here I forget to mention that there are more factors that limit the graphite's usefulness beyond seven or eight years. Apart from the structural stress from heat transients, neutron flux also damages the moderator over time. And there is salt intrusion into the graphite material. So in the end, the graphite is the limiting factor. So each integral molten salt reactor will operate for seven years and then it will be replaced by a new reactor vessel. Now, this reality leads to another choice, which is beneficial for cost and for manufacturing. Now, since the vessel does not have to withstand corrosive salts for much more than seven years, stainless steel can be used to fabricate the vessel. Now, the interesting bit is that these stainless steel reactor pressure vessels can really be mass manufactured. And I was looking for videos and you can see one right behind me because what you can see here is how an operated shipyard prepares, plots, cuts, forms, and welds pieces of steel together. Now, a ship is a really complex thing. A molten salt reactor core is not as complex as a ship. But the rules and regulations concerning the structural integrity of this reactor vessel are much more stringent than the rules that apply to the ship. Now, fabricating the rest is largely the same. I mean, you have the manufacturing of the graphite blocks, you have the manufacturing of the heat exchangers, the pipes. It is all going to be relatively straightforward and subject to the highest safety standards. Now, the secondary loop and the tertiary loop, they use well-known and ubiquitous materials and technologies uh, that are also used outside of the nuclear industry. There's also another consideration that we mustn't forget. The plant itself must be constructed. Now, there are companies out there that want to fabricate the entire uh, nuclear power plant by basically building it in a ship hull, which is a good idea. I'm not opposed to it, but there's only so many places where you can put a ship. A lot of factories, for instance, are far away from the water. Now, 
since we are talking about low pressure operation, remember what I said about the molten salt reactor being diametrically opposed to the light water reactor from a technology perspective. You have low pressure operation and also because you have very little volatility to speak of. The volume of nuclear steel and concrete uh, for the containment structure is going to be substantially less than for a pressurized water reactor, for instance. Now, conventional reactors can go on with their operations. I think that we need many more of those, especially to produce vast amounts of electricity. Molten salt reactors, they come in and they can help decarbonize heavy industry, industry that requires reasonably high temperatures. And I think that fast breeder reactors are also going to be necessary because they will enhance the fuel utilization efficiency of the entire fleet. And that's my key message to everybody. There's a task and purpose for each technology. Now, the molten salt reactor space is filled with a lot of contenders, and I, I will name a few. There is Terrestrial Energy, obviously. Uh, there is Thorcon. There's Seaborg. Copenhagen Atomics, Horizon, Kairos, and Moltex. I mean, the list is probably a lot longer, and I'm sorry if I didn't mention your startup. I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm glad that this was the end of this video. This was a long one for me. I hope that you learned something from this video, and if you did, please leave a comment and a like. It's a signal to the algorithm to show this video to more people. Now, if you want to support me making more videos like this, consider becoming a member of my Patreon page. Now, thank you all for watching, and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.